Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today, sharing some worship and praise with my auto harp. For the Bible says we are to praise him with the sound of harps and tambourines and let everything that has breath praise his holy name forever and ever and ever. And I've got the tambourine right here too, friends. The Bible says in Isaiah about spiritual warfare that every stroke of the rod of judgment that God will lay upon the Assyrian symbolic of our enemies will be to the tune of tambourines and harps. Praise God. And so here is the harp. Like the harp of God described in the book of Revelation, the redeemed from the kingdom of the Antichrist, the beast 666, that whole cesspool of new world order darkness, it says that they shall stand on the sea of glass with the harps of God to praise and glorify God for all eternity as overcomers who were faithful unto death and loved not their lives unto death. Revelation 20 verse 11, or rather Revelation 12, 11. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mashiach is Messiah, Mashiach, and there is no other, there will be no other but him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. a song of worship and praise that I love that I first heard over in Eretz Yisrael or over in Yerushalayim in Israel when I was there for Feast of Tabernacles many years ago. I went into a Messianic Jewish synagogue to sing praise to Yeshua HaMashiach, the mighty Son of God, the mighty Mashiach, and I heard this song Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh for the first time, and I love it. And there was an interesting history behind it. And uh, it, the words are, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God who was and is and is to come, magnifying his greatness, his glory, straight from the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the word in Hebrew for holy is Kadosh. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. And Kadosh he is. Hashem Ha Kadosh Baruchu, or hold, the name holy and blessed is he. Hallelujah. They are 
and honor hallelujah give him glory and praise give him glory and praise and honor worship and honor and praise glory be to the lord god the almighty Baruch Hashem, hallelujah. Baruch HaBav Hashem, Adonai. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Glory be unto his name. His name is great and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Well, friends, that was my auto harp. I love playing my auto harp. When I read that in Isaiah, uh, the prophet, all about spiritual warfare and how God promised the Jews when the Assyrians were after them out to destroy them Isaiah the prophet said and every stroke of God's rod of judgment and wrath and destruction against the invading army of the Assyrian would be to the sound of tambourines or tabrets and harps hallelujah here is a rhythm check tambourine I've given one of these to at least two pastors uh, who never had known the joys of the Rhythm Tech Tamri until I gave them to them as a love gift for their ministry. But oh, what a wonderful thing it is to praise the Lord with the sound of tambourines and harps. Hallelujah. I have literally been in battle against true murderous Assyrians, as it were, and they were very bloodthirsty, cruel, and brutal. I've been in spiritual warfare against many different groups, friends, including Satanists of the mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee. Very, very real battlefield. So real that police officers behind closed doors, Christian even, like one young man, Eddie, and uh, I remember sharing with him about how God had laid it on my heart to stand with the Christian victims that were being stalked, terrorized by these Satanists, and everybody seemed to be too afraid to come against them. And I said to him, Eddie, we've got to pray against this darkness. They're, they're abducting, they're, they're killing, they're murdering innocent children, people, stalking Christians and killing them too. And friends, this will never get reported in the mainstream news media. But the truth is it was happening. In fact, I'll never forget taking the hands to pray with a young man who wanted to come out of Satanism. He'd gotten recruited in the fifth grade in school because there's many teachers and principals who by night are black robed Satanists and they're planted in the school systems to subtly find different ways to recruit the children, influence them away from God and away from the Bible and to recruit the children into hardcore Satanism and it happens more than you'll ever know. And this young man admitted to me that uh, he had done horrific, horrific things. Um, before he finally decided to come out of the Satanism, the craft, and the brotherhood. And uh, I wrote many articles about this. And when he 
confessed that he had actually sacrificed his girlfriend recently because he said she was she'd given up her baby for sacrifice for the coven but then had regrets later and started going to the police he said well nobody narks on the satanists of Asheville, north carolina and gets away with it to the police so he said they decided to make an example out of her and because she was his girlfriend they put the sacrificial dagger in his hand and they demanded that he sacrifice her and tragically he did so and he, I could see the grief the tears the remorse on his face as he recounted all of this in detail to me well I led him to Christ that night and I told him there's nothing you've done that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross to forgive and this is the Bible this is true but I also felt a holy obligation to contact local law enforcement so I called the North Carolina Bureau of Victim Justice and I complained and I said I just spent time with a man who admitted that he had sacrificed his girlfriend with his coven up on Town Mountain Road there in Asheville, North Carolina. And I was pretty distressed about it. And the voice on the other end of the North Carolina Bureau of Victim Justice said, Now calm down, ma'am, calm down. This kind of crime is much more common in these parts than what most folks know. He said, furthermore, don't even trust the police you think are working with you he said because many of them are in fact secret Satanists they're infiltrated into law enforcement sheriff's department police department intelligence committees to cover for their people on the outside to make sure they never get successfully prosecuted and sadly it works all the time knowing this I went to a very special Christian officer there in that city of Asheville North Carolina and we sat down behind closed doors and I'll never forget the look in his eyes of fear, literally. He said, Pam, I really do want to, as a Christian officer, investigate and expose Satanism here in these mountains and help the victims that are being stalked. He said, but I am so afraid. I said, okay, Eddie, give me your hand. The Bible says Jesus gives us power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means harm us. The Bible says the blood of the Lamb was shed to defeat and destroy the works of the devil. And I've been operating in that for many, many years, friends. Standing against Satanists who are stalking people that I was working with and praying with and visiting them in their homes. And we saw victory after victory after victory in Jesus. Day after day and night after night as we used spiritual weapons. And I said, okay, Eddie, let me take your hand. Let's together come before the Lord. And let's pray and seek the Lord. So we prayed in that office there. And we prayed for God to protect him, cover him with the blood of the Lamb, the mighty power of his blood, the full armor of God, to give him protection of the holy angels, wisdom, discernment, discretion, and guidance, and, and also wisdom to know when no, you don't walk into that den of lions or that nest of serpents. There's times when the Lord says, no, though I know you trust me and I know you're standing on my word, I'm not sending you there. It's too dangerous. Wait on me for the timing. Oh, how many times I have listened to the Lord when he said that. It saved my life. If you're going to be in hardcore spiritual warfare, friends, you need to learn to listen. Fast and pray and listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. And don't try to be a martyr. Don't try to be uh, some hero and go out where God said no. Let me do it. Let me handle it. This is not the time, but it's not. I'm not sending you there. One pastor who was very, as a former Satanist, told me up in Indiana, after she came out to become a Christian, she said, well, one pastor was so excited that he was winning young people to Jesus Christ out of the local Satanist covens in Indiana. And oh, there are many in the region of Ohio and Indiana. I know so if they're ministering and I was just horrified at the darkness there. And she said, well, he was so excited about winning these young people out of Satanism and they're coming to Christ that he overstepped the boundaries the Holy Spirit gave him. She said, and even though he prayed with several people and they said, don't do it. He literally wanted to take a Satanist robe that one young man had given him after he came out of it and turned in all of his satanic paraphernalia. He literally wanted to put it on as a disguise and infiltrate the Satanist ritual to see what they really do and then to 
cast it off, rebuked them in the name of Jesus, thinking they're all going to just fall on the floor, etc. Well, he got prayer with some Christians, and he said, she said, you know, Pam, the Holy Spirit told him each time to the person he prayed with, don't do it. This is not the way. This is not the time. But he wouldn't listen because he was so full of his own faith, his own, oh, I'm going to do this for Jesus. Well, the Holy Spirit said not to. She said, Pam, he didn't listen. It was very sad. He put on that rope. He went into that ritual. And the demons speaking to the heads of the covens, the coven there, told them exactly who he was. They, She said they grabbed him, ripped off his robe, and they literally, to teach the Christian community a lesson, they literally stripped him and nailed him to a cross. And were in the process of doing so, and apparently somehow, by the grace of God and an angel, for this was a young man who believed in Jesus, police somehow showed up, which is very, very rare. And they scattered into the night, and they found him in a state of semi-conscious. He was just out, like in a coma, nailed literally to a cross they had to take that cross take him bring him into an emergency room ex extract those nails get him off that cross it took him many many weeks in in the um intensive care unit before he was finally ready to go home and she said pam i don't think to this day he is serving the lord after that horrific experience but he was warned after prayer by the holy spirit and though his intentions were good and his motives are pure. The Lord said, no, too dangerous. Wait on me. I have learned not only through my own experiences, but other people's experiences. If God should call you into hardcore spiritual warfare, you better listen to what the Holy Spirit says. And when he says, don't go there, there's a trap set for you. Don't drink that. It's been poisoned. Don't trust that person. They're a fake Christian in the church spying on you. You listen, you listen, you listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And it will save your life and let you live a, <laughs> another day to preach the gospel and to share Jesus Christ, the Son of God, with many. But yes, we, we should be putting on the full armor of God every day. Jesus has given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Christ, as long as you're listening to him, he will protect you and he will save you. Hallelujah from the enemy. Glory be to his name. I've seen God deliver many Christian servants of God from terrible traps and setups. On the other hand, you may say, well, Pam, but what about those Christians who loved Jesus, trusted him, and died? I said, well, yes, let's look back to the early martyrs of the early church. And there's been martyrs to this very present day throughout the world for Jesus Christ. Did God somehow fail them because they died for Christ? They died in the faith. They were martyrs. No. I've learned through years of research and ministry and years of walking with Christ that there are times when God, for his glory, allows people to die as martyrs for Jesus Christ. In fact, we can read about this in the New Testament, where the Bible speaks of Peter and John and Jesus appearing to them after the resurrection. And uh, Jesus said to Peter before he was taken from them and caught up into heaven to be with the father he said you know peter when you were young you walked wherever you want to you girded yourself and walked but he said when you get older another shall gird you and take you where you do not want to go and of course it was in reference to the fact that someday he would be taken away to be martyred for the glory of god in the name of jesus to be an example to others of faithfulness unto death and loving not our own lives unto the death and glorifying God by confessing Christ to the very end. And John even wrote that in the gospel when he wrote and said, Jesus spoke this to indicate by what manner of death he would glorify God. You know, we always think of, oh boy, God healed that person. Yes, and praise God for every healing. And God saved that person from a terrible accident and rescued them from a terrible crisis. Praise God. Yes, God does it. And he's done it for me so many times. But do we ever stop to think that God just might be glorified through martyrdom? And it might be used to bring many to Christ who are not believers. I will never forget talking to my friend Elaine. Elaine Nost of the Rebecca Brown books. One of those books being he came to set the captives free. And you can find them in Christian bookstores. And at one time, Chick Tracks were publishing them. Two accounts and that she shared much more with me than what were in the books because she told me 
that back when the books were being written, when she was with Rebecca Brown, and she had left her uh, a while back afterwards, and I met with her after she had left Rebecca Brown, uh, she said, you know, Pam, I'll never forget the Christian martyrs who died under our satanic rituals, under our hands. She said, nothing convinced me more of the reality of Jesus Christ and made me decide that I wanted to follow Jesus than the martyrs, Christians we had abducted, Christians we held for sacrifice, and many of whom died as martyrs, and others had incredible experiences with Jesus. She said, Pam, I will never forget how one night we were going to have a human sacrifice ritual and Satan had been demanding Christians for sacrifice and we had several women and they were being let out from the cage they had been held in for sacrifice. She said, and I will never forget what happened next as we were leading them out. She said, something happened all around us. We couldn't see it, but the two Christian women could see it. And they looked up and they said, Jesus, Jesus, you've come for us. You've come, Jesus, you're here, you've come. She said, we Satanists couldn't see anything, but we knew there was power and glory and something incredible happening all around us. And she said, Pam, just like that, the spirits, the eternal spirits, the redeemed spirits of those two women, born of God, born again, made to enter into heaven. She said their spirits were taken up out of their body and their bodies collapsed on the floor in front of them dead, but with smiles on their faces. She said, we Satanists were shocked. She said, there they were, laying on the floor dead and with a smile on their face because Jesus had come for them just in time. She said, I went home from that ritual that night, cursing and muttering and saying, darn it, what kind of power do these Christians have that before we can do our thing to them on the satanic ritual uh, altar, she said, they're gone. And with a smile on their face and Jesus came for she said, I tell you, nothing got me more convinced of the greater reality of Jesus Christ and ultimately led to my salvation than the Christian martyrs who died in our presence during these rituals. She said, nothing moved me more deeply. Friends, it's not a pleasant thought to think. The flesh never likes to think about death. Mine is the same. It's a natural thing for the flesh to say, ugh. Does it hurt? No, we don't want that. But you know, it's amazing when you're a child of God and God is using you. It's amazing to stop and think that not only can God use you for his glory in life, but also in death. And we can see that pattern with Jesus Christ. Oh, how God used him in life to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to bless people in so many ways to feed the hungry, to comfort those who mourn, to do great and wonderful, glorious, fantastic, unspeakably wonderful things. But then we see the other side of the coin, the cross, that he was sent to earth to die on and to bear for us, to bear our sins and carry our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed and to redeem us from sin and Satan's power through his death and that glorious shed blood shed while hanging from that tree of Calvary. Jesus Christ had the supreme gift of being able to glorify God not only throughout his entire life, but right down to the very moment he left earth through his death as well. And how many, I wonder how many Roman soldiers and others watching became convinced that he was the Son of God and received him as their Lord and Savior. And of course, he was resurrected on the third day and appeared to many and then was caught up into heaven to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord God, the Almighty. But it's a wonderful thing to know, as the Bible says, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Praise God, the Almighty. And to know that God, if you really want to glorify God and be used of him, realize that he can use us not only through our lives live for him every single day, but should he call for it, should he allow it, we can also glorify him by our deaths 
for his sake and for righteousness sake as well. This is a biblical principle. People in the Old Testament were willing to die for faith in God. It's called in Hebrew, Kadosh Hashem, or dying to sanctify the name, meaning you are willing to die to do the right thing in his sight rather than break his holy commandments, rather than to deny the truth and do things that the pagans do and the ungodly do. You know, it's the same principle of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children who refused, refused, refused to worship the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And he said, now when everybody's playing these instruments around the image, everybody must bow down and worship this image or be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, no way. We would rather be burned to death in that fiery furnace, essentially, uh, rather than to blaspheme and desecrate the holy name of God, the God they represented to the world the one true God of Abraham, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. They could not defile that. They could not worship a fallen idol, as the word says, and as the Bible taught through the commandments, thou shalt have no other God before me. And so they were willing to die to sanctify the name of God, to honor him, to glorify him, and to do the right thing in his sight. And Jews call that, it's, all, it's in Yiddish or Hebrew, Kadosh Hashem, dying to glorify the name, sanctify the name. Well, we as true believers in the one true Messiah, Hamashiach, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, we too are called to Kadosh Hashem, or being willing to die, to glorify his name, to magnify his name. When the enemy says, when you get arrested, and you know, many have been arrested throughout the centuries for Christ, they say now, especially with the Romans when they took over there in Israel and then began to persecute the new believers in Jesus. They would arrest these pesky Christians, whether in Rome or throughout the Roman Empire or there in Israel, say, do you believe in Jesus? You know, deny him and burn some incense to Caesar and, and honor Caesar as divine and holy and we'll let you go. But if you will not renounce your faith in Jesus Christ and worship Caesar instead, We'll kill you. We'll crucify you. We'll feed you to the lions. We'll burn you at the stake, put you on a cross and cover you with tar and burn you to death. Well, these Christians knew that they could not deny Jesus Christ, not to save their lives, their family members, their careers. They knew the command of Jesus Christ. And it's clear in the book of Revelation. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. And so when these, these Romans, like with Polycarp, famed Polycarp, beloved Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna, who served the Lord for many decades, hallelujah, he was actually taught under the Apostle John, who had direct communication and relationship with Yeshua or Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Well, finally, in his older age, Polycarp had a vision of dying for Jesus Christ, of martyrdom. And so when the Romans soon after came to take him away they tempted him they said oh come on just burn some incense here to caesar and and praise his divinity and renounce that jesus and we'll let you go you're an old man we don't really want to do this just cooperate with the government cooperate with the system and with our leaders and uh, we'll let you go polycarp knew he could not jesus said confess me before men he that confesses me before men will I confess before the Father. He that denieth me before men shall be denied before the Father. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. He that overcometh, or she that overcometh, shall not be hurt of the second death. Jesus promised in the book of Revelation. He had no other option. He said, why should I deny Jesus? He's done all these wonderful things for me. Why should I curse him, reject him, renounce him when he's done nothing but good for me? So he was taken away to a Roman Colosseum and in front of thousands of screaming pagans there who are watching the whole event, uh, the uh, governor of that city said, now uh, renounce Jesus uh, and uh, renounce all, that, all, all of this you believe in. And he refused. And so in the sight of all those Roman pagans, that man suffered and died for Christ. But before it fully began to happen, the Bible 
or rather the ancient, um, not Bible, but ancient early manuscripts of the early church following the Bible uh, declared that there was a voice from heaven where an angel spoke and many people heard it. And that voice said, Polycarp, play the man. In other words, be strong and glorify Christ and act like a man, not like a wimp or a coward to paraphrase it. But he was told, Polycarp, play the man, glorify God, be proud of that Jesus you serve. And Polycarp did so. And he gave his life for the glory of God without flinching, without denying or renouncing God's son, Jesus Christ. Oh, how many martyrs for Christ, men and women alike have given their lives for the glory of God. And you can be sure that many people went home from that uh, spectacular martyrdom there in that Roman Colosseum, questioning what, what kind of power do these Christians have? that they will not fear death, they will not deny Jesus Christ, and they are willing to suffer and die, even be burned at the stake and, and stabbed and, and suffer everything for his sake. You can be sure that many received Jesus Christ as their Savior after that event happened. The early church had a saying, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. You know, we in America are so spoiled and have been so spoiled. When my pilgrim ancestors came here in 1620 to found a nation under God and for the glory of God and for the furtherance of the kingdom of God, uh, there were so many groups of Christians who came and established churches and brought in Christian principles and teachings and laws and morals. And there was much Christianity in America's early beginning. And I'm not talking about fake pseudo-Christianity where some of them came in from corrupted churches as in Rome at that time, corrupted in many ways and set up uh, these mission schools where Native American children were seized from their homes and families and literally beaten if they wouldn't stop speaking their language and their hair brutally cut off. And, and uh, it's just very terrible how these children were treated. That is not Christianity. I work with Native Americans and I testify, I said, Jesus Christ was in none of that and that's not how you treat children. Even if you want to correct them, chastise them, that was not of God. But anyhow, many true Christians came and established churches and Christian colleges and many other things. Yes, America truly had a genuine Christian heritage. And my pilgrim ancestors were a part of it. But oh, how far America has fallen, fallen, fallen today. But would you believe that in that fallen state that America we find them? America in 400 years after my pilgrim ancestors arrived, there are many strongholds of hardcore Satanism across America. And I was to find out as God led me, and it was a leading of God, not something I chose. I never wanted to know about these things. But the Holy Spirit said, I'm calling you to research, to write articles, to wake up my people so I can raise up prayer warriors who will stand in the gap with knowledge of these things against what Satan is doing in your nation today. So I wrote articles. I wrote a book, Satanism in America Today, which was self-published. It's not published now, but I put the reports out for free. So no one would have to buy a book. But I was horrified when Christians that, or rather, well, they're Christians now, but former Satanists turned Christians. When these Christians who had been Satanists sat down to be interviewed, many of them admitted to me that they had been forced before they became a Christian. And when their parents forced them into rituals, they had been forced to witness Christians dying for their faith on the satanic altars of America. And according to many I've interviewed, it happens all the time. As Elaine Nost of her, the former satanic high priestess of Indiana for 18 years, before she became a Christian, as she admitted to me, she says, Pam, Satan was always demanding Christians for sacrifice. And we Satanists obliged. We targeted the ones we wanted. We stopped them and many were abducted and they died like all the rest. She said, except that many times Jesus would interrupt that ritual and he would take their spirit right out of their bodies so we could not torture them to death. They were dead before we could do anything to them. She said, nothing got me thinking more about the power of Jesus and his greater power, greater than Satan's, than those Christian martyrs that died in our hands. I have interviewed former Satanists who have told me horror stories of what has happened, though, to Christians in these rituals. 
Elaine's daughter, Claudia, who was with me one day when I interviewed her, she said, oh yes, she talked about Christians being nailed to crosses, especially at Easter time, to mock out the death of Jesus on the cross and to celebrate Satan's alleged victory over Jesus when he got nailed to the cross. And Christians are heavily abducted at Easter time all around the world, in fact, to be nailed to crosses to mock out the death of Christ on the cross. Another young woman, Paula, in the mountains of North Carolina, told me about how her father was a Satanist hunter using a van with all the windows blacked out on the sides and the back and a curtain behind the driver in the passenger seat with a trained abduction team in the back with knockout drugs and duct tape. And they would prowl lone country roads and streets at night and, and where there was nobody out there, nobody could see what was happening, looking for lone hikers, lone joggers, somebody walking home in dusk at night. And she said, and Pam, we hated this one Christian woman in our area of Murphy's, Murphy Andrews, North Carolina, near Tennessee, because she was such a Christian prayer warrior against us. She said, and as our van was prowling, looking for victims, there she was walking home and it was dusk and getting dark. She said, my, my father drove that van up. The abduction team grabbed her, forced her into the van, injected her with a knockout drug, bound her hands and feet with duct tape in her mouth, and she was the next night's sacrifice. She said, I was forced to watch as they took her to the Satan's caverns of the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. And she was chained to an altar there. And they gave her an altar made, and they said, Now, you could either choose to live by renouncing that Jesus Christ and becoming one of us, and we'll let you live, and you can pretend to still be a Christian, go into the churches and seduce pastors and recruit young people into Satanism and just work for us. And if you won't, you're going to die. My friend Paula said, Pam, I'll never forget the courage of that woman. She simply looked up at them and said, I cannot deny Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. And she said, Pam, I was then forced to watch as they tortured that woman to death. But not once did she ever deny Jesus. Why? Because the power of the Holy Spirit, the living power of the living God was there. And he may have even taken her spirit up out of her body before all of that even happened. But absolutely, she did not deny Jesus. And Paula never forgot that experience. And she became a Christian later, came out of it and fled from her wicked Satanist parents. I guess you're wondering, Pam, why are you talking about martyrdom on this video here in America? Well, you know, we're not like a communist China where they're killing Christians in these re-education camps and body organ harvesting camps and North Korea where they get killed all the time and in Islamic countries like Saudi Arabia where Christians can die for their faith and places in Africa and all over the world. Well, all I know is this, that after researching for over 25 years all about the coming American Holocaust of the New World Order globalist plan to seize America, to cancel out her constitution, take away her sovereignty, strip us of our freedoms guaranteed under the constitution, and bring us under big brother, oppressive, tyrannical presidential executive orders. Instead, um, I was told by former planners that Christians are among the biggest target that they want to arrest when they declare military martial law and they start the big New World Order globalist takeover of America to get rid of all the political and religious enemies of the world globalist government of the New World Order. They said Christians ranked at the top. And uh, my friend Elaine told me, she said, well, when I was working for the CIA at one point, um, we sat around discussing in the CIA how the heck to get rid of the Christians who stand in our way of our New World Order takeover. She said, we knew they'd never be willing voluntarily to deny Jesus Christ and, and accept Lucifer instead and, and uh, go along with this New World Order agenda. She said, Satan is the father of the New World Order. I've taught that to Christians for years now, the truth about the New World Order. Revelation 13 says so. It says in Revelation 13 that the dragon Satan gives to this beast of the New World Order his throne, his power, and great authority. And people who worship him are the ones, are Satanists, who, who bring forth the New World Order. It's Satan's kingdom all the way. Don't be fooled. So she said, we discussed, you know, how we get, the Christians just won't go along with it. I said, you're right, Elaine. I will not. 
and millions of other good biblical Christians will not either. She said, well, we knew that. So we finally came up with the idea of FEMA detention or concentration camps and boxcars and shackles. And of course, also the guillotines that I've reported on of Revelation 20 verse 4, the souls of them beheaded for the witness of Jesus uh, under an Antichrist 666 cashless society, satanic world government, where we will not deny Jesus to join them. And she said, we knew the Christians would never go along with it. So she said, when martial law is declared hardcore military martial law, the Constitution is fully suspended. Militaries take over the streets with tanks and barbed wire. And they start arresting millions of people on the New World Order hit list. She said, Christians were at the top of the list to be rounded up and not just incarcerated in FEMA camps. She said, but killed, terminated. I asked my friend Michael Maholi, 20 years Naval Intelligence, CIA, that God used, God used me to bring this man after serving Satan for 20 years in the CIA and Naval Intelligence and serving the New World Order. He came out. I led him to Christ. He became a born-again Christian. And he told me one day as I was interviewing him, he said, Pam, all of us in the CIA know about the purpose of the concentration camps or the FEMA camps you are reporting on here in America. I said, Michael, I thought we had freedom. What do you mean? He said, we all know that these FEMA camps will be used someday to terminate. He didn't say detain or incarcerate. This man with 20 years of experience under his belt working for the New World Order agenda. He said they will be used to terminate the future resistors of the New World Order. You may be saying, well, what's a resistor of the New World Order? Well, I got a whole list of people they uh, have declared to be resistors of the New World Order. Christians rank at the top of the food chain, the top of the list. They hate them. They can't get wait for martial law to get rid of them. Christians, constitutionalists, patriotic Americans, legal gun owners, homeschoolers, pro-lifers, and the list goes right down of literally the Christian backbone of America, a bunch of good people who will say no, no, no to a satanic, demonic, communist pattern uh, tyranny taking over America and stripping us of all of our freedoms and religious freedoms and oppressing us as in communist countries all over the world. Of course, they will all say no. They will rise up and resist. And the military has already discerned that and that's why they're called in the CIA one of the biggest planners of the New World Order agenda in America. And uh, literally, um, they've already seen this happening in the future resistance rising up against the New World Order and so the FEMA camps have been transformed into death camps, detention camps, camps that will kill under martial law. And they will be using the same tactics Hitler used in Nazi Germany and the Bolshevik communists used uh, back under communism in the Soviet Union. Uh, they used prisoner trains to haul political and religious resistors of communism and Marxism to the bitter gulags up in Siberia and prison camps to suffer and die for their faith and be removed from their communist agenda. Hitler used prisoner trains as well to haul away both political and religious resistors of Nazi tyranny. And it was not just Jews. There were Christians hauled away for their faith as well. Just read the testimony of Corrie ten Boom. And so they've transplanted the whole agenda from other countries and their experience and their examples right here to America. We've got the modern day concentration camps or gulags. We've got the prisoner trains or boxcars and shackles. And we have something um, a little bit new on a major scale, although Hitler did use guillotines at times. Sophie Scholl, that great martyr and warrior for Christ against Hitler, was beheaded for her faith uh, after being arrested for withstanding, standing against Hitler's Nazi regime. But on a major scale, we do have guillotines. Now prophesied in the book of Revelation, Revelation 20, verse 4, where John the Apostle said, And I saw the souls of them beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God. And to paraphrase it, to make it simple, who essentially didn't go along with a cashless 666, antichrist, false messiah, uh, worship Satan, the devil, new world order agenda, as described in the book of Revelation. And he said they were beheaded for their faith. But the glorious ending of that is, he said, but when Christ returned, they were raised and given glorified resurrected bodies to reign with Christ on the earth a thousand years. Praise God. Oh, what a great reward for being faithful unto death. But I'm going to say without apology, with tears in my eyes, 
and pain in my heart, but I cannot lie because God's people have not been prepared. Which pastor have you ever truly heard preparing Christians in America to face even prophesied in Matthew 24 and Revelation end time martyrdom for their faith? Although up to 150,000 Christians are dying for their faith worldwide every year. But Christians in America just don't think it can ever happen here. But I'm going to tell you, the groundwork has been laid out. Thousands and thousands and thousands of guillotines have been imported into America from Japan, Saudi Arabia, China, and some even made here. The boxcars and shackles have been made under secret contract between the U.S. government and companies like Gunderson Incorporated uh, up in Portland, Oregon to haul ultimately millions of innocent Christians, gun owners, patriots, constitutionalists, pro-lifers, homeschoolers, anybody who will resist a new order takeover to the FEMA camps to be terminated or shall we say martyred for their faith. And many will die right inside those prisoner box cars with shackles because many of them, according to eyewitnesses, have the modern military guillotines I've been reporting on already bolted inside them so that many will not even live to make it to the FEMA camps. And this disturbed me deeply as I researched these things. I said, Lord, what pastor is preparing the body of Christ? Because it was already prophesied through at least one well-known ministry back in the 1980s. I was collecting prophecy very intently about these things. And the Lord spoke through one very prophetic ministry and warned about all these things that I report on coming someday to America. But the Lord also added, and I know the hearts of the Christians in America. And when this great persecution comes, many of you will deny me. You will not be able to bear the pain, the separation, the persecution, the humiliation. But the Lord said, but I will have a remnant and to the remnant I will give revival, but will be a revival in the midst of suffering and dying for me. He never said, a quickie rapture like so many Christians are anticipating. They can see things are close, but they're just saying, no, we're going to get raptured out. That's what my pastor taught me. Well, beware of CIA plant pastors and Jesuit plant pastors who are there to lead you into a false sense of safety, comfort, denial, where, oh, it doesn't matter if Christians are dying over in Syria, Iraq, um, China, North Korea, all over the world, and uh, hundreds, well, over 100,000 every year at least, it's not going to happen to you. You're going to get quickie raptured out. That is not what my Bible teaches. Jesus said in Matthew 24, when the disciples said, came to the Lord and said, Lord, but Master, tell us, what is a sign of your coming and your soon return? And he said, ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Only under a one world antichrist new world order agenda can all Christians simultaneously be hated worldwide and be delivered up to death? He said, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then you shall be, you know, delivered up to death, you know, persecuted, rejected. He said, and many shall hate one another, betray one another and fall away. Jesus warned about the great falling away. So did Paul in his writings. But Jesus said, but he or she that endureth Unto the end, the same shall be saved. He didn't say he that gets quickie raptured out. Oh, oh, shall be saved. He said he that endureth unto the end, which means faithfulness unto death. I have taken a huge compilation of my reports and information gathered from Pentagon, CIA, many, many sources as I travel across the country to uncover the plans of the New World Order takeover for America. I faithfully took these reports to pastors, youth pastors, as far away as Alaska, a pastor, and right here in my state of Montana. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was never so disappointed in my life as to see pastors literally almost shaking and looking at me with fear in their eyes and saying, we can't share this with our congregation. I remember this one associate, uh, associate pastor in a church in Bozeman of 7,000 people. He grabbed my arm with my big, heavy compilation, pulled me behind, closed door. He shut the door, pulled me into his office and said, look, lady, we know these things are coming to America someday, but we don't dare tell our people the truth. I said, why not? I was thinking they're going to fall away. Many will fall away. It's already been prophesied. If 
The pastors and Christian leaders do not build up God's people and warn them and prepare them and get them fasting and praying now for grace and strength and protection against these things. They can be terrified because they had not been warned or prepared and terrified into denying Christ and fall away and lose their salvation eternally. I was ashamed of his answer that day. He said, oh, we might frighten off members. We might lose money. Oh, how ashamed I was of him that day, that he preferred money, filthy, damned, and accursed, Illuminati currency of the Satanist banks and bankers, not even worth the paper it's printed on and with satanic symbols on it. You, sir, a Christian who should know better, prefer money, 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 nicer car, bigger homes, like all these big rich televangelists, to eternal souls that God has committed into your care. You're not going to warn them. You're not going to fast and pray with them. You're not going to warn them and, and tie them with end time Bible prophecy so that their hearts can be prepared and they can stand firm for Christ when the hour of temptation comes. I'm going to tell you right now, friends, God has shown me through years of this work, fasting and praying, weeping all across America for many years, sacrificing jobs, careers, putting my life online and publishing things that have almost got me killed more than once. There is blood on the hands of pastors and shepherds today because all of this information I'm sharing, it's alternative news. You can find it across the internet with more than more than one website, not just mine, American Holocaust Coming, where I document all these things, research, document, publish, but many others as well, all indicating great persecution, even unto suffering, death, and martyrdom is coming. And the Bible said so. But God is going to hold pastors over God's precious sheep, accountable in the day of judgment if they have failed to prepare God's children if they have failed to bend the watchman on the wall to wake them up to pray with them to prepare them to teach them the principles of maintaining your soul's salvation unto the end Jesus said but he that endureth trials testings persecutions he that endureth unto the end the same shall be saved Jesus said be thou faithful even unto death and I will give thee the crown of life he that overcomes shall not be hurt with the second death of the lake of fire. Jesus said, He that confesses me before men, I will confess before the Father. He that denies me before men, I will deny before the Father. You will lose your salvation. It speaks in Hebrews. It warns against falling away and denying Christ. And yet many will be tempted to deny Christ when the new old order comes. And sadly, some will not pass the test of true discipleship Christianity and they will perish eternally and many because of the fact that their pastors will not warn them and they're too afraid many are afraid of losing their tax exempt 501c3 tax exempt status because they love that money and that nice car and that new home and they don't love the souls of the people that are over they love the money that comes in they rake in from their big congregations every Sunday and I found that out personally through living and working on a big television uh, televangelist ministry grounds for many years and I saw the truth that nobody could ever see behind the cameras because I lived there 24 7 oh the love of money and the things of this world and the sin and immorality and unrighteousness that crept in they were not serving God or serving the viewers they were serving their own pocketbooks oh what accountability there will be in the day of judgment over these things and I never forgot when I took my book and my documentation American Holocaust coming all the way up to Alaska at the invitation of friends and they said we want you to share this with our pastor I brought that into his office and he had a look of fear and terror on his face like he didn't want to hear it and he didn't want to think of the price he might pay if he were to share this kind of information with his congregation You know, I've always, I, I went to Bible college for several years and I've loved Jesus and the Word of God and I have nothing but the highest respect for biblically defined mighty men of God. I say men of God, live up to your high calling in Jesus Christ. I'm not one of those feminazis in the church world that thinks, yeah, women should be in leadership and fooey on you men. Oh no, far be it from me. How I love and want, I want to admire the men. God has created men for great and holy, mighty purposes. Oh, absolutely do I believe in the mighty men of God. So my greatest heroes are the mighty men of God. 
Look at Moses and what he did you know, 40 days and nights in the mountain with God. Look at Joshua and Caleb. Look at glorious Samuel the prophet. Look at Daniel. Look at King David and look throughout the New Testament. Oh my gosh, Peter, Paul, the apostles. I believe in the great and the mighty men of God. And I absolutely say more power to you if you are sincere and genuine man of God and pastor and walking and the example and the holy example of Jesus Christ. More power to you. Oh, praise God for the great and mighty men of God. That's why it broke my heart when I took this documentation to these men and saw such a response and heard it from their own lips. One man with a congregation of 7,000 here in Montana terrified too terrified afraid they lose money members how shameful is that and god will absolutely hold such false shepherds who will not prepare god's people for prophesied end time persecution oh god will hold them accountable in the day of judgment for every soul in their church that falls away because they did not prepare them did not warn them did not pray with them did not teach them about Maintaining your faith unto the end, even if it costs your family, your loved ones, your job, your life. How many jobs have I lost because they said, you can't share Jesus with your patients in this home health care job. You, you can't. I said, you know what? I can. And God's word commands me to. And if you won't let me, then I don't need your job because I serve Jesus Christ first. I will not withhold the word of God from elderly people about to die who could go to hell if I fail to share Jesus Christ with them. And how many jobs Throughout the years did I lose because they said, we like your work. Just stop talking about Jesus. I refused. I'm commanded to talk about Jesus. If it costs my job, my life, my freedom, I am under a divine command. I will confess Christ with my dying breath. You know, they can drag me up to these modern military guillotines that I've documented that I will tell you are absolutely real. I've interviewed one man who is training his men and his platoon in Fort Lewis, Washington, uh, to operate these modern military guillotines and he resigned when I told him they've used to behead Christians someday if they won't renounce their faith in Jesus to become a Noahide and join the New World Order. Um, you know, a mature Christian does not fear these things. Jesus said, fear none of those things which thou art to suffer. To me, it's a badge of honor in these end times to let people know how great and glorious and marvelous our Savior Jesus Christ is and how real he is in his kingdom is to hell biblically and scripturally with your damned and accursed new world order, your guillotines, your Noahide laws, your martial law, all of your evil plans, your FEMA camps, your boxcars and shackles. I serve a risen Savior Jesus Christ and his truth is eternal and shall not be changed by all the persecution in the world and all the guillotines you may hold out, behead me for my faith. Give me a martyr's crown. I don't care because I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed to be taken out of this world. This world is not my home and this mortal body, every cell in this body has already been programmed to die by the wisdom of God who created all flesh for his glory. My cells will only last for so long. I don't care about preserving this mere mortal body. I want to preserve the eternal spirit within me that Jesus Christ has created within that can never, never die. I want to enter into heaven through gates of pearl and streets of gold. I want to be with Jesus for all eternity in the marriage supper of the Lamb and to play the harps of God. Hallelujah on that sea of glass. I'm living for eternity, friends. I am not moved by these things, but my heart is broken and so deeply grieved for these poor lost souls so deceived, Jew and Gentile alike, deceived by the rhetoric, the false promises, and Satan's always giving false promises, of the new world order where Lucifer reigns in place of the one true living God and his son, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. I pray for them all the time for God to open their eyes and to save their souls before it's too late. My heart grieves for where they will spend eternity. And I also pray for the Christians that have not been warned and do not understand we are living in the end of the end times and Bible prophecy ready to manifest before our eyes. And I pity those Christians who have had nobody to prepare them to say, yes, 
whether we like it or not. And unfortunately, these things are here. But God's grace is sufficient. And we knew we'd never leave this world alive anyhow someday. You know, praise God for the great rewards that we're living for. If you're really living for Jesus, these things hold no fears. Because your rewards are in heaven. Who wants to be around when all the nukes start going off? And nation after nation, kingdom after kingdom, starts loosing their weapons of mass destruction. And the whole world goes up in an apocalyptic, cataclysmic, horrific, horrific destruction that Jesus prophesied. He said, unless those days are cut short, no living thing would be left alive in these last days. I am happy just to be God's faithful Christian. I love the Heavenly Father, and I fear none of these things because I've been redeemed by Christ. And if it brings glory to God, and it helps to enlighten one more lost soul when they see, hey, these Christians aren't afraid to be fed to the lions. They're not afraid to die. They're not afraid to be beheaded. They're not going to deny him for anything. Many might be very moved. In fact, some will be moved to receive Jesus and be willing to die with us. Praise God. You know, I always wanted to be in the Bible and Bible prophecy. I said, darn, King David, oh, one of my heroes, King David, that mighty fighter and prayer warrior, praising God and mighty Daniel, oh my gosh, and his visions and Shemuel or Samuel the prophet. I said, darn, I, I always wanted to be in the Bible too. Well, you can be. In the book of Revelation, it speaks in Revelation 20 verse 4, where he saw the souls of them beheaded for the witness of Jesus under this prophesied end time, Antichrist, 666, false messiah, false prophet, cashless society, world government. And he said, and they lived and reigned a thousand years with Christ in glorious resurrection bodies. I thought, oh, my gosh, it's not too late. I too could fulfill Bible prophecy, and that's a darn good deal. Dying and getting raised with immortal resurrection bodies to reign with Christ on the earth. Hallelujah for being faithful unto death and refusing to go along with Satan's damned and accursed beast computer of Brussels, Belgium, and all the other computers tied in satanic cashless society to hell with it in Jesus' name. I serve a risen Savior. I'm not going to be a part of it. What a great deal. I too can be a Bible prophecy. And by the way, I'm not a shield for the New World Order trying to say, hey, Christians, let's just clap our hands and go along with it. No, the Bible says we are to resist the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And every day now, for how many years have I fasted and prayed periodically and said, Father, I come against Satan's plans to behead God's children. I come against these guillotines, against these FEMA death camps, against the boxcars and shackles. In the name of Jesus, Father, move against these plans to destroy God's children. No, I'm just not sitting back and letting Satan have his way unchallenged. Jesus Christ came to save me from the devil's plans of my destruction. But what I am saying is, should that day come when I find myself, my back against the wall and oh my gosh, and here they are coming up into my face and snarling saying, ha ha, we got you lady. Now what will it be? Will you renounce faith in that Jesus and join our new order? Or do we behead you? They have the answer right here. They don't even need to ask that question. For me to live as Christ and die as gain, as Paul said, I confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. He is divine. He is immortal. He is the Son of God, and I, he is worthy of reverence, and he is my Lord and Savior, and there will never be another. I believe in him, and to hell, biblically and scripturally, with your damned, accursed, and to be destroyed by Almighty God, new world order. This is my answer before heaven and earth to Christian and evil Friend and foe alike, this is where I stand. Here I stand for Christ. I could do no less. I could do no more. But I'm encouraging you Christians to fast and pray and seek God now for the grace to stand firm should the hour of temptation come to you when these things begin to manifest. Seek the Lord now. Absolutely pray for protection for yourself and your loved ones, for none of this is the will of God. God was simply forewarning us in the book of Revelation what the wicked one and his followers plan to do. God is not schizophrenic. He's for his children. He loves his children. He wants to deliver us from evil. And many other Christians who are delivered from evil under communist China, North Korea, praise God, and many other horrible things. But unfortunately, there will be those Christians who are caught up in all of this in the crosshair 
and asks, Well, do you deny Christ and join the new order, or do we behead you? From holy scriptures I testify before heaven and earth that there is but one answer for the Christian. I am a Christian. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I will not deny him, ever. We are called to be faithful unto death and, and to confess him before men. For the true Christian, there is no other answer. But oh, what joy in heaven and for all eternity comes with that glorious answer. Let me die, friends, for him who died for me. Let me give my life for the testimony of Jesus Christ as he gave his life for his testimony. We're called to follow Jesus. And I praise God for every time God has delivered me from the plans of Satanists, the government, horrible people out to kill me to silence my testimony. I pray all the time for God to keep me alive in freedom and liberty. And I'm fighting the devil every day who would love to destroy me. But because my testimony and my witness isn't finished in this earth, even as with Jesus, the enemy could not take him out prematurely and the enemy cannot take me out prematurely. Nor you, if you're following and serving Jesus Christ, you pray for protection every day as I do. But I said, Lord, it is, my future and destiny are all in your hands. Your wisdom. You are Lord of my life and sovereign. I don't know what your plans are for me, but I do know that you are Lord of my life and I bow my knees to you, Jesus, and whatever you have chosen for me to glorify you as your child and one who truly calls you Lord, so be it. I trust you with not only my life, but my death for your glory. It's in your hands and you need to do the same, friends. Trust the Lord. Praise him, love him, serve him. Well, I always pray and ask God, what kind of message do you want me to give to your people? This has long been on my heart because things are happening so rapidly now that can easily lead to martial law, full-blown, uh, false flags, all kinds of things. And then out comes the military, out comes the NATO troops, out comes uh, these people patrolling the streets of America, out comes the boxcars, shackles, FEMA buses, FEMA vans, Project Pogo, Project Zephyr, Zephyr, and some of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, the wicked plans of men to destroy the church. But praise God, as the Bible says, but thanks be unto God, who always gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. So friends, take his hands and trust him to bring him you through the future, because I say without apology, you need not fear what the future holds when you know him who holds your future, Jesus Christ. And he will bring you through to victory. Just keep doing what he says in his word, confessing him before men, loving him, praising him, trusting him, serving him, abiding in him. And he will give you the grace to be brought safely home at last. Well, this is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today. God bless you. And this is a sermon that comes straight from the heart of God. I've been fasting today on just liquids. And the Lord said, share this with them so i'm just being an obedient servant praise god that these things hold no fear for me for i've made my decision after serving him for only fi over 50 years it's not hard to make that decision i made it every single day of my life when i woke up yes lord i will follow you i don't care what persecutions come i don't care what happens i trust you for my future hallelujah so this is pamela ray with hope for today god bless you I'm going to be bringing you more videos, more music. I have my keyboard out there. I have my auto harp. I'm going to start playing more of, make some more videos up in Glacier. But be aware that I've been getting reports all over from people all over of tanks in the streets and trucks with barbed wire and talking of a cyber attack and all of that. Yes, they can easily use these things and even deliberately create. And I've been told by CIA sources way in the past, they said, the plan is to deliberately create crises so that they can declare martial law, suspend the Constitution, and get the New World Order ball rolling and start arresting the people that stand in their way. And Christians are at the top of the list. Well, praise God. And all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And I'm going to keep following Christ because I'm not living for this world. I'm living for eternity. And friends, if you're a Christian, so should you. So God bless you. This is Pamela Ray from Montana, probably the guillotine capital of America. I've never had so many reports of truckers bringing in guillotines and they're store, storing them and stockpiling them in closed military bases here, probably because the state has so few people here and there's so many remote regions. 
But again, thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory through Christ Jesus. And all the guillotines in the world cannot change the eternal truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yeshua HaMashiach is the one true Mashiach. He is divine. He is the Son of God and to be reverenced. And that can never be changed. And my faith in him, therefore, can never be changed either. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And keep your eyes on Jesus. Bye-bye for now.